Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, and here once again happens to be in my home shop in my garage where I'm still messing around with this Shopsmith Mark V Model 520. I keep saying 510. The 510 model is the first one I bought in 1987. I love it. I use it in my other shop. This one is a more advanced, more advanced fence system, and uh, I just like prefer the 510, but we're going to get by here. Uh, in today's video, I want to share with you a, a simple little tip. Um, I guess we would call this somewhat of a fixture that is certainly a fixture of my shop. And one of the challenges with the Mark V or any really home shop table saw is the fact we need rear support when we're ripping long stock. Um, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube of, uh, of owners of the Mark V showing how they've made rear support tables or how they've utilized the extension tables, the floating tables as they are called, to create rear support. I've done the same thing. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's, it's more hassle than it's worth. And uh, we'll spend some time in another video showing you what I do if I do need that kind of support. But I'm gonna show you an extension that I use every single day in my shop and how it might need to be adapted if you happen to own the Mark V Model 520 as I do now. I brought home the main table of the Mark V Model 510. Here you can see it alongside of the 520. That aluminum table, all the supports for it, the, the carriage that support the table, they're exactly the same. What's different is this rail on the front and the back versus this tubular rail here and the size of that fence extrusion and the way it functions. Um, I'm, I'm just have this precariously mounted in one hole on the end of my Mark V. But you can see that I've used with this uh, quarter 20 carriage bolts that are recessed on the face of this fence and then pass through the fence itself. There are three mounting locations in the 510 fence. And then I've got Bittner nuts holding that in place. And as simple as that, I now, when I'm ripping, have support for the material that's coming off the back. Now, is this gonna support a, a 24 inch wide board? No, not entirely. Usually, if it's a big piece, I'll, I'll get a buddy or a bride to help support the weight of that board. But I tell you what, when, when ripping standard pieces, you know, two inch face frame stock or, or narrower, this comes in handy. So I just leave that on the fence all the time. Now you can see the, by, by the design of this, I simply have a piece of wood that is uh, close enough to the table that it doesn't interfere with the table or the fence tube. And then I've got a slight chamfer on the edge of this piece of uh, Baltic birch plywood. Um, this one, I've made several, several of these over the years. I normally keep paste wax on them. Sometimes I polyurethane them, but you know, use the best material you can to make this and uh, they'll last for years. Okay, here in this shop, I've got the 520. And so let's take a look at how this will have to differ uh, if I were to want to mount this exact one over here on the 520. So thankfully, when Shopsmith redesigned this fence, they made the, the center line of this T-slot at the same height from the table surface as the holes that were drilled into the face of the 510 fence. So we can take the carriage bolts out and just swap them out with these T-nuts from Shopsmith and those will slide into place. Now you can see that what I'm using here, in addition to the T-nut, is I'm using the Bittner knob, which is the quarter 20 uh, lock nut driven into a half inch nut with a cap screw driven into it. And I wish I had a fender washer, but this is close enough, just use a larger washer. And that's going to span that large hole right there where originally I had a countersunk uh, carriage bolt. We'll just get this started and slide it into the extrusion. Now, the nice thing about this is I have this forward and reversible adjustability. So I can position this at just the right position from the, uh, the fence rail to keep me out of trouble. Again, nice thing about this, because all of this is positioned at the same height, uh, my stock is gonna slide right over. 
Now, if I'm using something thicker and that's going to interfere with this, then I'm going to have to go ahead and swap that out for a uh, maybe uh, maybe a stove bolt or something like that. But I find most of the things I'm ripping, that's going to work out just fine. Now, I've got a really neat jig I want to show you, and that jig really needs this. And so uh, next weekend, I'm going to show you that jig, and this will all make sense. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, cheap shots, leave them below, and we will answer those in our midweek episode of Stumped Q&A. So uh, be sure to type something down below, and go ahead and subscribe, and click the dang bell, because uh, there's a lot more to come, and you're not going to want to miss it. All right, so make it a great day, and we'll see you midweek.